Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Steven Roth and I'm a board certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. April is Oral Cancer Awareness Month. All this month we've been discussing topics relevant to oral cancer and today we'll be finishing Oral Cancer Awareness Month with a discussion on the latest oral cancer treatment, PDL1 inhibitors. First, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. An additional disclaimer for this video, I may be discussing brand or generic name medications and therapies in this video, and this video is not sponsored by any company, and this discussion should not serve as an endorsement of any product or service. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. First, some historical context. In 2016, the Food and Drug Administration approved nivolumab, which is the generic name for the brand name Opdivo for treatment of patients with recurrent or metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. This was specifically for patients with disease progression on or after a platinum-based chemotherapy. This was used in patients with more advanced cancers that had already recurred or came back after surgery or was metastatic and had spread to other sites and failed first-line chemotherapy. More recently in 2019, the FDA approved Pembrolizumab, which is the generic for the brand name Keytruda, for first-line treatment of patients with metastatic or unresectable recurrent head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. It's important to note that surgery is still the first-line treatment for small, early-stage, and localized oral cancer. But now, Pembrolizumab is being more widely used as first-line therapy in patients with very large, or very late stage or metastatic cancer. So how do these medications work? First, we have to understand cell receptors. The best way to explain cell receptors is to compare it to a lock and key, where PD-1, which is expressed on our T cell immune cells, is the lock, and PDL one or the ligand, which is expressed on epithelial cells, is the key. One of the functions of our immune system, in addition to identifying foreign invaders, is to identify and attack tumor cells. This mechanism prevents all of us from forming cancers all the time. It's also why patients with immune suppression are more prone to forming cancers. In health, some of our normal cells expressed PDL1, which is the key, which fits into our T cells PD1 lock. This tells the T cell not to attack our own healthy cells. Some cancers have used this lock and key as an adaptation to disguise themselves from our immune cells. The cancer cells trick our T cells by expressing PDL1, which hides them from attack by our T cells. The cancer PDL1 fits into the T cell normal PD1. The lock and key fits, and so the T cells let the cancer cells be without attacking them, allowing the cancer to progress. That's where PDL1 inhibitors come in. The PDL1 inhibitor jams up the lock, which prevents the key from entering. It blocks the lock and key connection. This allows the T cell to recognize that this abnormal cell needs to be attacked and removed. Earlier, you heard me use the name brand Keytruda. You may recognize this from TV commercials as a treatment for advanced non-small cell lung cancers. In addition to lung cancers and head and neck cancers, PDL1 inhibitors are also being used in stomach cancers, bladder cancers, and cervical cancers. This is true at least at the time of taping in April 2022. In order to determine whether or not a patient is eligible for receiving these medications, a test must be performed on either biopsy or resection tumor tissue. This is an immunohistochemical stain that highlights PDL1. For non-small cell lung cancers, a tumor proportion score, or TPS, is calculated by examining the percent of tumor that is positive versus the percent of tumor that is negative. Anything with positivity greater than 1% as of the taping of this video is considered positive and the patient is eligible for this treatment. All other cancers I mentioned are currently using what is known as the Combined Positive Score, or CPS. 
this looks at the number of tumor cells and immune cells that are positive divided by the total number of tumor cells. For head and squamous cell carcinomas as of April 2022, any CPS greater than or equal to 1 is considered positive, which allows the patient to be considered for pdl one inhibitor immunotherapy. That being said, there is extensive training and calibration required to interpret these stains, and I've spent a significant amount of time learning how to calculate this score. I also compare my independent score with another pathologist to ensure this is consensus before reporting it, or that we both agree. So there you have it. A quick but in-depth review of the latest oral cancer therapy, pdl one inhibitor immunotherapy. Hopefully we can continue to develop new ways to treat our patients with targeted, effective treatments that have the least amount of side effects as possible. Thanks for watching and acknowledging Oral Cancer Awareness Month with me all month. Feel free to check out my other videos from the past few weeks in my Oral Cancer Awareness Month playlist. I'll be back in a few weeks on my regular bi-monthly posting schedule with a broader range of oral pathology topics, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope that you've enjoyed recognizing those diagnosing and diagnosed with oral cancer this past month with me. Thanks again for watching and be well.